So let's have this topic. Are parents doing enough to monitor the use of internet by their kids? Okay, let's just have this topic. I know some of you are single, no kids, yeah? But let's imagine, huh? So I say, mm, okay, let's say my opinion is, yes, I think parents are doing enough to monitor the use of internet by the kids because da 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 da. So you must give a reason, huh? Don't just say yes, no. You must say why. In my opinion, parents are not able to do enough because these days, both the husband and wife are working and they don't have enough time to look after what the kids are doing. So. Alright, um, what um, Krishna. Krishna said is that uh, parents do not have enough time to uh, monitor the kids. All right. but what, what I feel is um, parents do not monitor the use of internet by, the, by their kids because uh, Nowadays, kids tend to become rebellious if you go too much into their privacy time when they're they are using the internet, right? Yeah, um, so what is it is that um, kids tend to be rebellious these days and so parents will have trouble communicating with them. Uh, what I think is the problem is that parents tend to offer responsibility to someone else, like the government or to the school, so yeah. Uh, what did you say is that um Parents tend to blame, put their blames on governments and other other things instead of they themselves. They don't pay their responsibility. But for my opinion, parents they do can do more things for their kids. For example, because of like the in internet security, actually got this software a parental parental control to like uh, monitor as the internet and the website their children access to. <laughs> okay, what? parents can take some action on uh, the kids like using the parental control yeah. Yeah. Okay, in my opinion yes, um, parents can uh, do monitor their kids uh, maybe they can spend more time with them and um, stop blaming the government or, or what yeah, it's actually uh, they can just uh, spend uh, uh, quality time with the kids <laughs> <laughs> As the last speaker said, <laughs> the, the parents should spend more time with their children and monitor what, what they're doing. Uh, in my opinion, the, um, it's too difficult. <laughs> I think children spend too much time in their bedrooms on their own without the parents aware of what they're doing and what they're watching. So I think the parents should put spy cameras in all the children's bedrooms. <laughs> should be installed in children's bedroom, you know, sort of like the CCTVs they have in the company so that they can see, parents can see from perhaps where they are working, what their children are doing in their individual bedrooms. I am of the opinion, or rather I am of the same opinion as Alan, except that perhaps instead of installing expensive CCTVs in children's rooms, <laughs> just bring the computer downstairs, bring it to a very public place so that the children will know that as they are surfing the internet, they are being monitored. <laughs> okay, um, Michelle. Michelle said that you know, she's of the opinion that you know, we can move the, uh, the um, computer down to a public place whereby we all can, uh, the more parents can view and monitor the children's movements. And in my opinion, I share the same opinion because that's exactly what I think we should do. Uh, that's the control that we can do, uh, you know, to offer to the children in, in terms of uh, monitoring their internet surfing, what they see on the screen. We can also kind of view it from the side. Okay. Keep standing, I'm gonna sit down. Uh, just uh, discuss what do you think went well. Three questions: What went well? What could be better? And what do you think stopped you? Uh, from listening well. What are the challenges you face from listening well? Okay. What went well in this exercise? What could be better? And what's the last one? Were you listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> what was the last question? What are the obstructions? Yeah, what are the obstructions or the challenges? Don't use the word problem. Huh? What are the challenges to listening well? Can you know, just discuss? Mm -hmm. That's that. I think voice projection. Sometimes if words are being eaten up, and it's very difficult for me to figure out what's being said. So if you speak up, it helps. So that to me is one of the obstacles. I think what went well is that the people are prepared to listen to the beginning. So then you know we are ready to hear. So 
I think, I think the exercise is a bit forced because we know we're going to be asked to yeah. speak next. Um, so, uh, in you know, in, in real life you don't mm -hmm. because you, you know, so I think this is it's slight because we actually were paying attention to being in the last mm -hmm. big client started to want her off, mm -hmm. which is an indication also that if people are all saying the same thing, there is a tendency then not to listen. If it's not fresh, if there's not fresh, fresh opinions coming in, then, then, then your interest starts to wane. So I think that's a danger. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and in real life, just to echo that, uh, that is what often happens. Our mind just wander off. You know? So especially someone is telling a long story, yeah. suddenly it's like we woke up. Oops! You know? <laughs> the person asks us a question, we're like, Oops! What were you saying? Okay. No, and that's precisely what I was going to add as well. Like the length of the conversation, someone keeps talking about the same thing or, or just this it just gets too long in there or like okay I think I tend to just disconnect. Mm -hmm. What else do you think uh, stopped you from listening really well? I think another issue that uh post in real life in general as well is that while the other person is talking, you're formulating your own thoughts. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely that's what yeah. I want to come up with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so basically we are thinking, what should I say next? Huh? You know, what's my point? You know, mm -hmm. So we are so keen and so Sorry, eager first. to appear very intelligent you know, mm -hmm. and to give a good point that we are not listening to. Mm -hmm. That's probably what I was going to I was actually, actually going to throw something in really <laughs> <laughs> children, children should all watch a lot of pornography because they think it's good for them. <laughs> it's part of the educational process. <laughs> And that happens for our sales as well, in sales. Because we are so keen to like, oh, I've got this benefit. Uh, wow, you know, sure you will buy from me if I just bring this benefit out. Mm -hmm. So we, we end up, we're not really listening to what that person is really saying about the needs and so on. Mm -hmm. We're just focused on, uh, okay, the moment she stops talking or he stops talking, I'm going to throw out mm -hmm. my wonderful uh, bag of tricks, you know, our magic. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and then personally, I experienced that as well when someone was selling me insurance. Now that time I was single, okay? But I don't think the person realized it, assumed that I was married, and uh, you know, wanted to sell me this policy on I don't know, some woman's policy for family or whatever. And never asked me any question, never listened to what I was saying, and at the end just say, oh, this is perfect for you, and so on. And until I say, uh, actually, I don't think I need this, you're not answering my, actually, I do need insurance you know, at that point of time, but I was so, you know, like, Turn off that I didn't buy from the person because I felt she was not listening to my needs. Mm -hmm. She was so focused on selling what she wants to sell. Mm -hmm. I think I can connect very much with that example uh, from an experience. I went to buy one of those network and this guy was very much into selling one particular brand and he was like, he won't listen to what I really want and other things, but he's like, buy this, this is the best. I already disconnected saying like, like, yeah. oh, this guy is just trying to force something onto me. Yeah. I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. so just move on. Yeah. That's a good word. So our mind is already disconnected. Yeah. Like, okay, there's no rapport already. We're not going to buy from the person, even though we need it actually. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we need something, yes. but we just disconnect. Okay, tell everyone. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you.